Section 9 of Beowulf. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Tad E. Beowulf by Unknown. Translated by Francis Barton Gamer. 24. Beowulf spake, Baron of Edge Theo. Lo, now, this booty, son of Halefna, Lord of Shildings, we've lustily brought thee, sign of glory, thou seest it here. Not lightly did I with my life escape, and war under water this work I essayed, with endless effort, and even so my strength had been lost, had the Lord not shielded me. Not a whit could I, with hunting do, in work of war, though the weapon is good, yet a sword the sovereign of men vouchsafed me to spy on the wall there in splendor hanging old gigantic how oft he guides the fiendless wit and i fought with that brand felling in fight since fate was with me the house wardens that war sword then all burned bright blade when the blood gushed o'er it battle sweat hot but the hilt i brought back from my foes so avenged i their fiendish deeds deathfall of danes as was due and right and this is my hest that in heorot now safe thou canst sleep with thy soldier band and every thane of all thy folk both old and young no evil fear shilding's lord from that side again aught ill for thy earls as erst thou must then the golden hilt for that gray-haired leader hoary hero in hand was laid giant wrought old so owned and enjoyed it after downfall of devils the danish lord wonder smith's work since the world was rid of that grim-souled fiend the foe of god murder marked and his mother as well now it passed into power of the people's king best of all that the oceans bound who have scattered their gold o'er scandia's isle hrothgar spake the hilt he viewed heirloom old where was etched the rise of that far-off fight when the flood o'erwhelmed him raging waves the race of giants fearful their fate a folk estranged from god eternal whence guardian dew whence guard and dew in that waste of waters the wielder paid them so on the guard of shining gold and rustic staves it was rightly said for whom the serpent traced sword was wrought best of blades in bygone days and the hilt well wound the wise one spake son of halef de Neu. silent were all lo may he say who sooth and right follows mid folk of far times mindful a land warden old that this earl belongs to the better breed so oft aloft thy fame must fly o friend of beowulf far and wide o'er folksteads many firmly thou shalt all maintain mighty strength with mood of wisdom love of mine will i assure thee as a while ago i promised thou shalt prove a stay in future in far-off years to folk of thine to the heroes a help was not hera mowed thus to offspring aguela honor shildings nor grew for their grace but for grisly slaughter for doom of death to the danishmen he slew wrath swollen his shoulder comrades companions at bore so he passed alone chieftain haughty from human cheer though him the maker with might endowed the lights of power and uplifted high above all men yet blood fierced his mind his breast hoard grew no bracelets gave he to danes as was due he endured all joyless strain of struggle and stress and woe long feud with his folk here find thy lesson o future advise thee this verse i have said for thee wise from lapsed winters wonder seems how to sons of men almighty god in the strength of his spirit sendeth wisdom estate high station he swayeth all things while as he letteth right lustily fair the heart of the hero of high-born race in seat ancestral assigns him bliss his folk's sure fortress and flee to hold puts in his power great parts of the earth empire so ample that end of it this wanter of wisdom weaneth none so he waxes in wealth no wise can harm him illness or age no evil cares shadow his spirit 
No sword hate threatens from ever an enemy. All the world wends at his will. No worse he knoweth, till all within him obstinate pride waxes and waits while the warden slumbers. The spirit sentry sleep is too fast, which masters his might, and the murderer nears stealthily soothing the shafts from his bow. 25. Under harness his heart then is hit indeed by sharpest shafts, and no shelter avails from soul behest of the hellish fiend. Him sees too little what long he possessed. Greedy and grim, no golden ring he gives for his pride. The promised future forgets he and spurns with all God has sent him. Wonder wielder of wealth and fame. Yet in the end it ever comes that the frame of the body fragile yields, fated falls, and there follows another who joyously the jewels divides, the royal riches nor wrecks of the forebear. Ban then such baleful thoughts, Beowulf, dearest, best of men and the better part choose, profit eternal, and temper thy pride, warrior famous. The flower of thy might lasts now a while, but ere long it shall be that sickness or sword thy strength shall minish, or fang of fire, or flooding billow, or bite of blade, or brandished spear, or odious age, or the eye clear deem wax dull and darken. Death even thee in haste shall o'erwhelm, thou hero of war! So the ring Danes these half years a hundred I ruled, wielded neath Welkin, and warded them bravely from mighty ones, many o'er Middle Earth, from spear and sword, till it seemed for me no foe could be found under fold of the sky. Lo, sudden the shift! To me seated secure came grief for joy when Grendel began to harry my home, the hellish foe. For those ruthless raids, unresting I suffered, heart sorrow heavy. Heaven be thanked, Lord Eternal, for life extended, that I on this head, all hewn and bloody, after long evil, with eyes my gaze. Go to the bench now, be glad at banquet, warrior worthy. A wealthy of treasure at dawn of day be dealt between us. Glad was the guy its lord, going betimes to seek his seat as the sage commanded, afresh as before, for the famed in battle, for the band of the hall was a banquet dight nobly anew. The night helm darkened, dusk over the drinkers, the doughty ones rose, for the hoary head would hasten to rest, age shielding, and eager the guy at shield fighter sturdy, for sleeping yearned, him wander wary warrior guest from far a hall thing heralded forth who by custom courtly cared for all needs as a thane as in those old days warrior wanderers wont to have so slumbered the stout heart stately the hall rose gabled and gilt where the guests slept on till a raven black the rapture of heaven blithe heart boded bright came flying shine after shadow the swordsmen hastened athelings all were eager homeward forth to fare and far from thence the great-hearted guest would guide his keel bade then the hardy one hunting be brought to the son of ecklaf the sword bade him take excellent iron and uttered his thanks for it quoth that he counted it keen in battle war friend winsome with words he slandered not edge of the blade twas a big-hearted man now eager for parting, and armed at point, warriors waited, while went to his host that darling of Danes, the doughty Atheling, to high seat hasten, and Hrothgar greeted. 26. Beowulf spake, bairn of Edge Theo, Lo, we seafarers say our will, far come men, that we fain would seek Hialok now. We here have found hosts to our heart. Thou hast harbored us well. If ever on earth I am able to win me more of thy love, O Lord of men, aught anew that I now have done, for work of war I am willing still. If it come to me ever across the seas, that neighbor foemen annoy and fright thee as they that hate thee ere will have used, thousands then of thanes I shall bring, heroes to help thee. 
of Heloch I know, ward of his folk, that though few his years, the Lord of the Gaiots will give me aid, by word and by work, that well I may serve thee, wielding the war wooed to win thy triumph, and lending thee might, when thou lackest men. If thy Hrethic should come to courts of Gaiots, a sovereign son, he will surely there find his friends. A far-off land each man should visit who vaunts him brave him then answering hrothgar spake these words of thine the wisest god sent to thy soul no sager counsel from so young in years ere yet have i heard thou art strong of mane and in mind art wary art wise in words i ween indeed if ever it hap that hrethel's heir by spear be seized by sword grim battle by illness or iron thine elder and lord people's leader and life be thine no seemlier man will the sea gaiots find at all to choose for their chief and king for horde guard of heroes if thou wilt thy kinsman kingdom thy keen mind pleases me the longer the better beowulf loved thou hast brought it about that both our peoples sons of the gaiot and spear dane folk shall have mutual peace and from murderous strife such as once they wage from war refrain long as i rule this realm so wide let our hordes be common let heroes with gold each other greet o'er the gannet's bath and the ringed prow bear o'er rolling waves tokens of love i trow my landfolk towards friend and foe and firmly joined an honour they keep in the olden way to him in the hall then Haleft and his son gave treasures twelve, and the trust of earls bade him fare with the gifts to his folk beloved, hail to his home, and in haste return. Then kissed the king of Ken renowned Shilding's chieftain, that choicest thane, and fell on his neck. Fast flowed the tears of the hoary headed, heavy with winters he had chases twain, but he clung to this that each should look on the other again and hear him and hall was this hero so dear to him his breast wild billows he banned in vain safe in his soul a secret longing locked in his mind for that loved man burned in his blood then beowulf strode glad of his gold gifts the grass plot or warrior blithe the wave roamer bowed riding at anchor its owner awaiting as they hasten onward hrothgar's gift they lauded at length twas a lord unpeered every way blameless till age had broken it spareth no mortal his splendid might End of section nine.